Hello and welcome to today's lecture on cell tower antenna radiation hazards and solutions. In the last lecture I had actually talked about what are the various RF sources in India and then we talked about health hazards associated with cell phone. Now let us look into what are the radiation hazards from cell tower and what are the possible solution. Now in India we have too many technologies, we have a CDMA technology GSM 900, 1800, then 3G, 4G and now we have Wi-Fi almost you can say everywhere, Wi-Fi is present in schools, in colleges, at airports, railway stations and there is a proposal to make Wi-Fi enabled city and this particular frequency just to tell you 2400 to 2500 the center of that which is 2450 megahertz is used in a microwave oven and you know that you can cook the food in a microwave oven in about few minutes. Of course that power is very high and Wi-Fi radiation power is much smaller. But however we also know that energy is power multiplied by time. So if I reduce the power by 1000 times then the time taken will be 1000 times more. Similarly if I reduce the power by 10,000 or 20,000 times similarly the time taken will be more. But you can actually think about that in one particular day see we have 60 minutes multiplied by 24 hours you multiply that by 365 in a year and you can see how many minutes are accumulated and then you can compare the power of Wi-Fi which is typically of the order of 0.1 watt compared to the microwave oven power which is around 500 watt of power. In fact I would like that all of you people please see this website wifiinschools.com. In fact this website is dedicated to help the public realize that wireless internet or Wi-Fi or cell phone or cell tower or any RF radiation that causes serious health effects such as damage to DNA, cancer and infertility. So just to show you some of the pictures of the thing you can see here that various antennas are mounted. You can see over here these are mounted on top of the building, here these are mounted on the side of the building. I just want to tell you there are two main types of antenna, one are these circular ones here, these are actually circular dish antenna and in fact these do not transmit very high power, in fact most of the time they transmit about 1 watt of power and they are actually meant for packet transmission. So though basically they do not communicate with the mobile phone, they communicate with each dish is communicating with another dish and in fact they do not want any human being to be there in between so that the communication is not broken. However, if any bird flies in that particular region will do get affected. So it is actually these vertical one which actually communicate with the mobile phone and I have given a very simple name to these, these are I have given name as tube lights, vertical tube lights. Why I call them tube light? Because when you turn on a tube light it takes time to turn on. Similarly our human brain which cannot see microwave, which cannot hear microwave, which cannot smell microwave. So we are not willing to understand also what are the health hazards associated with these microwave radiation. So, in India we allow these particular antennas to transmit 20 watt of power for 2G and 3G and we allow them to transmit 40 watt of power for 4G. So let us see what is the typical radiation pattern of these antenna. So of course the radiation pattern of the antenna is a three dimensional thing but just to make things little simpler we have actually divided into two plane horizontal plane and vertical plane. So you can see that the beam is wide in the horizontal plane. So if you think I am that antenna then the beam coverage will be wide. So all the people in this particular area will receive more radiation and people behind me or in this side will receive lesser radiation. But in the vertical you can see that the maximum radiation is in the forward direction. So people living in that particular direction will receive very high radiation compared to other people. Now beside this is the radiation pattern of the antenna, however there is another phenomena 
which is power density varies by 1 by r square where r is distance from the tower. So, that means let us say if there is a tower here and you are at this distance and if this distance is increased by 10 times then what will happen power will decrease by 100 times. So, this is important to understand that as you go away the radiation intensity is decreasing. However, this I have taken from one of the German website and what they have written people living within 50 to 300 meter radius are in the high radiation zone and are more prone to ill effects of electromagnetic radiation. And if you see in India people are living even at 10 meter or 20 meter distance from the tower. So, people living at less than 50 meter distance are in extremely high radiation zone. So, this is the one of the case which actually became quite popular in Mumbai area about 4 years back. So, what had happened 4 years back in this particular Usha Kiran building 4 cancer cases were reported on 6th floor, 7th floor, 8th floor and they actually found out that there were multiple towers were installed in the opposite building and all these antennas on the towers were transmitting and this being in the main beam and as I mentioned that this is installed on the 7th floor. So, from the 7th floor where the maximum radiation will go towards 6, 7, 8th floor. Now, while these people were fighting with the cellular operator trying to convince them to remove the tower, 4 cancer cases actually became 6 cancer cases and you can see that these are almost in consecutive floor. So, basically why? Because this is actually speaking leading and trailing edge of the main beam. So, of course, after several years of battle they were finally able to get the towers removed. Now, just to know what are the standards in India and abroad. Now, I just want to mention that India had adopted ICNIP guideline. Uh, just to tell you what is ICNIP. ICNIP stands for International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection and people think that it must be an international body something similar to WHO which is actually speaking taking care of health of the entire world. Well, that is not true. ICNIP is nothing but an NGO and which was actually formed by Dr. Michael Repercelli. And if you just Google search about him, you will find that there are lots of websites claiming and saying that he was always an industry person. So, all the things which are there in the ICNIP guideline, they basically suit the industry. However, there are still few interesting things are there. ICNIP guideline itself says that these guidelines are only for short term exposure and not for long term exposure. And in fact, this guideline of 4500 milliwatt per meter square for GSM 900 is only valid for 6 minutes per day. But in India, we adopted this particular guideline for 24 hours a day. I mean just think about you put the food in a microwave oven for 1 minute or 100 minute. What will be the case? The food will be totally charred. Now, I just want to mention here. So, in India technology came in 1995, there were absolutely no guidelines. So, in 2008 they followed ICNIP guideline and then again they had come out with the white paper where they mentioned that they are going to look at it. And 2010 my journey from Mumbai to Delhi started. So, just to tell you between 2010 and 2014, I made more than 30 trips to Delhi. I met TRAI people, TC people, DOT people. I made presentations to the inter-ministry committee which consisted of DOT people, health ministry people as well as environment ministry. And then I had also submitted my report to DOT secretary in December 2010 and then IMC report came in January 2011. They did mention about lot of health problems, but at the same time they also mentioned it is not conclusive and they recommended that one tenth of the ICNIP norm should be adopted. And then in September 1, 2012, one tenth of the ICNIP norm was incorporated in India. However, again 
if this is valid only for 6 minutes per day, one tenth of that is only valid for 60 minutes per day, which really means one hour per day. Whereas people who are living next to the cell tower are exposed to radiation 24 hours a day. So really speaking, India has really adopted a very, very high radiation for 24 hour exposure. If you see now, most of these things are below 450, majority of them, except if you look at here 3000 and 3000 is implemented by USA and most of the time seller operators actually quote that oh USA has adopted 3000, but we also know that they are very particular about the health hazard. So I just want to tell you that you actually look at the USA FCC guideline OET 56 page number 21. And it has a one paragraph where it is actually written there that they allow high power transmission in the rural or along the highways. In the urban area, they allow only 0 0.5 to 1 watt of power. So in India, we allow them to transmit 20 watt of power and for 4G, we allow them 40 watt of power. And that is why people in India are developing health problems at a much faster rate than the counterparts in the other countries. So I just want to also mention here Austrian Medical Association adopted on 3rd March 2012 and see what they are saying irrespective of ICNIP recommendation. So they also know what are the ICNIP recommendations. ICNIP is in Germany and they are in Vienna, Austria. So they know each other pretty well and see what are their guidelines and they are talking about regular exposure of more than 4 hours per day. So if you are exposed for more than 4 hours per day, then even 1 milliwatt per meter square is very far above normal. And in India what we have? 450 milliwatt per meter square for 24 hour exposure. So you can see that we are literally speaking sitting on radiation time bomb which is going to create havoc in India in time to come. So just to tell you that we have done radiation measurement at more than 1000 places and just to highlight a few cases here in this particular place here we had done the radiation measurement and you can see this value is only 17.7 milliwatt per meter square and this lady developed cancer within one year. In fact, later on we had sent our team to that Usha Kiran building where they had reported several cancer cases and we found the radiation level to be between 5 to 10 milliwatt per meter square and they started developing these severe health hazards in about 2 to 4 years. Now besides cancer, in fact cancer is the last stage, lot of health problems happen before that. And I want to bring to your attention here. So this is the power density, which is milliwatt per meter square. And let's just look at this one. So one milliwatt per meter square. If you see here, all these reds are severe health problems. So you can actually see here that it is actually mentioning here decreased cell growth and other thing. You can see over here at the level of two or three, these are giving rise to childhood leukemia. But in fact, the onset of the problem even happens at such a low level, which actually means sleep disorder, fatigue, weakness and pain. And I'm sure people do not want to live with these kind of problems. Now, what are the most common complaints? So let's just look at the first column over here. It leads to sleep disruption, headache, concentration problem, forgetful memory, depression, fatigue. And I just want to tell you, India is now becoming capital of the entire world when it comes to the depression. We have several crores of people who are depressed today. So I'm not saying that everything is related to cell phone and cell tower or microwave radiation, but that is definitely, definitely one of the reason to cause depression. And if you go with these health problem, Majority of the time doctors will tell you, you have too much stress and too much strain. And you will in general agree, yeah, yeah, I have too much strain, too much stress or too much strain and you may not take any precaution. But if you ignore that, now things become 
serious, you may have a dizziness problem, heart problem, especially if you keep the cell phone in your shirt pocket near the heart. Visual disorder problem is also becoming a very serious issue. In fact, there are multiple reasons are there. Let us say you have a cell phone and you are actually either playing a game or watching video and let us say it is still transmitting one or two pulses per minute. So, first of all, when you are looking at it, it is a very small screen, characters are very small, you are actually speaking, your lids are not moving, blinking much and in that case of course, there is a stress on that. But besides that, there is a, this radiation going on. So, in fact, that radiation is coming towards you. So, your eyes are getting dried up, your lips are getting dried up and so on and that is leading to lot of visual disorder problem. So, cardiovascular problem again more prominent if you live next to the cell tower or if you use the cell phone next to your shirt pocket, buzzing in head alter reflex. If you ignore these things, now things become even more serious. So, these are Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson disease. In fact, in India, these diseases are increasing linearly. Immune system degradation, I have already talked about ear damage, irreversible infertility. In fact, that has become a major, major concern today, especially to the people who are keeping cell phone in their pant pocket because what is happening? It is affecting and it is affecting both the genders. For all the males, it affects their sperm quality and quantity and for all the girls and ladies, it affects the eggs in the ovaries. So, both of them are becoming infertile. In fact, a few years back, a report came in Mumbai that 46 percent of eligible couple are not able to conceive and in fact, today IVF is one of the biggest industry and there are so many people are going and of course, it is a roaring business for IVF people. And on the lighter side, just to mention that there was a one advertisement of idea on 3G, uh, one of the movie star had advertised that and the advertisement was like India busy busy no abadi. And in fact, I will tell you it is a absolutely perfectly true advertisement except that one line is missing in between India busy busy, they become infertile and hence no abadi. And I can probably predict that India may not be able to overtake China as far as the population is concerned because many people are going to die because of the health problem and many children will not be born because of the infertility issues. So, there is of course, an effect on the skin, DNA damage and increase in cancer risk. So, let us just look at it here. So, the professor Henry Lai had published a few papers. So, just to tell you, so this is a bundle of the DNA and if this bundle of DNA is exposed to X-ray, you can see that DNA breaks are very obvious because X-ray has a much higher energy. Here energy formula which is being used is E equal to H F, H is Planck's constant, F is frequency. So, it has a higher frequency, hence it has a higher energy and it can break the bond. Now, microwave does not have enough energy because of that particular formula E equal to HF. However, prolonged use can actually do a DNA damage and that DNA damage is responsible for various health problem. In fact, when damage to DNA is greater than rate of DNA repair because human body has the mechanism to repair the DNA. But if damage is greater than DNA, there is a possibility of retaining mutation and initiating cancer. So, even if you may not develop health problem, but your children may develop health problem. So, I just want to bring a, this bio initiative report in front of all of you people. So, there are two bio initiative reports are there. One is 2007 which has given references of 2000 papers. Another one is came in 2012, which gave references of 1800 papers. So, total 3800 scientific papers are there. These are written by 1000 scientists or so and these are published in the best possible journal of the world, which are peer reviewed. And you can see the details of this, you can just simply say www.bioinitiative.org. 
you can download this report in fact they have also given conclusion you can read that and make a informed decision but i also want to tell you if there are 4000 papers which say there are lot of health problem then there are about 25000 papers which say there are no health problem and in fact on the internet itself you can find that out of those 25000 papers more than 70% papers are funded by industry but still 30% is a large number so i actually went through lot of those papers and you will be actually surprised that there is actually a paper which says that oh this person used the cell phone for 15 minutes and they did the testing before and after use and there were no auditory problem in 15 minutes if people had developed a hearing problem then the whole world would have been deaf by now so you know that exposure was very small duration similarly there are many experiments they have done on rats but what they do they will expose the rat only for let's say one hour per day for 30 days and then they will say there is a no health hazard or there is a no conclusive thing in fact we have also done experiments where we expose the rat for four hours every day for 45 days and we found out 20 to 40 percent changes in biological physical and chemical so those changes are really speaking very damaging to the health of the people so let me take you around the world so you can see the nice pictures of around the world but what i want to show you what are the health hazards reported in different countries so this is austria salzburg report and what you see over here odd ratio of getting cancer and what this shows here greater than 1000 microwatt per meter square which really is equal to 1 milliwatt per meter square now you see there tower was built in 84 was updated on 2011 so that's about 27 years but just see the effect eight times increase in the odd ratio now this is the study in nyla germany tower was built in 1993 so after five years what they found out that the odd ratio risk is roughly about 1.1 now one is normal so 1.1 is not at all conclusive after 10 years what they found out this is about 3.2 times so you can actually see that the risk is very high after 10 years of exposure especially to the people who are living next to the cellular towers this is the report from brazil that 80 percent of the victim out of 4924 were within 500 meters from cell phone antennas now i also want to mention this is the naval medical research institute in fact this report was reported in 1971 but it was classified it only got declassified in 2017 and in fact it had given 2000 plus references and they have actually given categories a b c d up to q and in fact i counted diseases among these categories and they have mentioned about 130 types of health hazard and these effects affects on the whole body brain eyes head blood heart infertility hair loss mutation and so on these are the cases reported in mumbai so you can see that cancerous cell phone towers panic and six cancer cases in three years these are the reports in jaipur seven cancer cases in one area six cancer cases in another area in fact there are cancer cluster cases in the vicinity of the cellular towers in fact we sent our team to jaipur and they measured the radiation level between 10 to 50 milliwatt per meter square of course they are within the range of 450 milliwatt per meter square and that is what i have been telling that those things have to be changed now i want to also mention here 25000 brain tumors have been reported in just two states andhra pradesh and telangana and what they have written that there are about seven cases per one lakh population okay and again the doctors have mentioned that heavy use of mobile phone also increase risk of glioma there are of course saying that frequent headaches are there with several sections of people now cell tower radiation not only affects human being it also affects the bird so birds flying in the near zone of the cellular operators are getting 
affected and that is why sparrows population are disappearing in most of the metropolitan cities. Now, of course, it also affects the animals. In fact, uh, dairy cows have been reported, especially when the cellar antenna is within the close vicinity that they have reported that there is a decreased milk production. In fact, these days many cancer cases have been reported for dogs also. Now, it also affects the plants. In fact, just think about it that the tower is stationary here and the tree is stationary here. So, this is constant radiation bombardment and the water in these fruit bearing trees start getting vibrated. And so, what happens because of that their sizes start becoming smaller and the fruits become bitter and also the yield starts reducing. In fact, this thing I had gone to this particular place, there are four cell towers you can see over here near Gurgaon, Delhi, Tolnaka and the owner actually mentioned that the lemon yield actually reduced from 100 percent to less than 5 percent in just about 2.5 years of installation. In fact, alarmed by all these things, environment ministry had also formed a committee of 10 people and they had actually submitted the report in November 2011 and all these things actually show that there are associated health hazards. Now, in fact, now scientists are after WHO and they are telling them to classify RF field as class 2A or even class 1. So, what are the solutions to reduce? So, as far as the cell phones are there, I have already told you what are the precautions to be taken. Now, as far as the radiation from cellular towers are concerned, we all have to unite and convince DOT to reduce the norm immediately to less than 10 milliwatt per meter square. Uh, let me tell you this is not safe, this is just a one step in between which can be immediately implemented in a very simple way that the output power instead of 20 watt they should not transmit more than 1 to 2 watt of power in the densely populated area. So, they can either reduce the power amplifier or reduce gain of the amplifier. In fact, this will lead to several other advantages also. So, if they use a high power amplifier it requires cooling that will require air conditioning. So, now they can save that particular cost. In fact, power requirement reduces means they now they do not need diesel generators. They can use solar panel to meet this requirement. They can even claim carbon credit also. You can see this particular detail thing you can actually see click on this particular thing and you can see my report also. But why cellular operators are not doing this thing? The disadvantage of the reduced power is that if we reduce the transmitted power then the range will reduce from here to let us say here. So, then the people living in this particular area will not get the radiation. So, signal will not be there. So, they have to install more number of low power transmitter. So, if they have to install more number of low power transmitter it will definitely cost more money and that is the reason why these people are not doing it. So, just like in the western world they transmit much lesser power and they have low power repeaters. The same solution we have to adopt in our country and uh, that is the only way to have this wonderful technology deployed safely in our country. So, just to conclude I just talked more about cell phone and cell tower, but there is a RF radiation from computers, your laptops, AM, FM, TV tower, leakage from microwave oven, Wi-Fi, radars and all that. All these are additive. In fact, I also want to mention that in addition to this overhead high voltage transmission line which carry 50 hertz or 60 hertz. In fact, these have been classified by WHO as possible carcinogen. In 2002 itself, in fact, majority of the people are not even aware of that. In fact, there are certain rules are there that okay, if there are high power voltage transmission line then within 30 meter there should be no residential building or office building. However, with growing population people are getting closer to these uh, high power transmission line and they are developing health problem. So, we want that the awareness must be created among the people, people should unite to convince government of India and all the governments in the world to adopt 
stricter radiation norm and i would request all of you people to share these slides with all your friends and known people to create awareness and we should all demand that there should be a safe radiation and just to tell you health is fundamental right of every citizen of this world so we must demand safe radiation level so that we can enjoy this beautiful technology and yet we do not develop the health problem so thank you very much bye